here in the Netherlands, specifically in a little village called Hoikeve. For the last four years, there's been this grand experiment happening here. You see, in this village, all the residents have severe dementia. You know, we don't talk about dementia very much, but if you consider the world, the developed world, 65 million people are expected to have dementia by the year 2030. Close to 100 million just 20 years after that. And what to do with all these people with dementia? In many parts of the world, they are ignored. They live in these nondescript buildings on anonymous wards, lots of white coats, nonstop television, and hardly anything but sedation. But what if those wards could look something like this? Entire villages dedicated to people with dementia. Welcome to Hogeve. It's a little village just minutes from downtown Amsterdam. At first glance, it looks like any other small Dutch town. But look closer. It's not. Outsiders aren't allowed here. And everyone who lives within these walls has something in common. It's the last place any of them will ever call home. So this is a neighborhood? Yes, it's a neighborhood. A neighborhood for people with dementia? Yes, yes. Ivan van Amerongan is one of the founders of this new age elder care facility. It was built in 2009, and it's the only one of its kind anywhere in the world. I think one of the things that are very important to people with dementia is that they don't understand what's happening around them. They don't understand the world anymore. We try to help people understand what's happening and let them feel that it's okay. For Corey Visser, everything is okay. She seems happy here, even more so when Theo, her husband of nearly 60 years, comes to visit. You come to visit here every day? How do you describe this place to your friends? Perfect. It's perfect. I wouldn't know a better place for her. It's 100% good. Before she came here, I visited five other places, and I definitely saw that this was the best place for her. What makes this place better? This is open. This place is open. People can enjoy the seasons. They can really feel if it's cold or warm. They can visit a restaurant. They can drink a cup of tea, and they are free to go wherever they want to go. Wherever they want to go, except back into the real world. These sliding glass doors are the only doors that lock here at Hoyave. This is the only way in and the only way out. This is the site where there used to be a previous nursing home, yes. right? You worked at that nursing yes. home. You, you, you had a transformation, if you will, yourself, where you basically decided that wasn't good enough. Well, was there a moment or was there some particular event that really sparked that for you? For me, personally, that was the moment that my mother called me and told me that my father had passed away suddenly. Nothing was wrong with him. He just had a heart attack and he died. And one of the first things I thought was, thank God he never got to be in a nursing home. That's, that's, that's crazy that I have to think that. I'm in the management of a nursing home and I don't want my father to come there. Wow. That's crazy. Um, my colleagues in the management team had similar thoughts and at one day we said, well, let's talk about this because this is very important. And we sat down, we said in the, one day in November 1992, we said, let's take one day and decide on what to do to make nursing homes worthwhile living. And we did. A four-acre complex, home to 23 housing units, 
and seven different lifestyle themes, such as crafts, culture, religious, and urban. Take a look over here. The colors, the artwork, even the choice of dishware, specific to this particular lifestyle. And those people you live with should be people that could be your friends, people you would pick to live with and not just the first coming around. Those people probably have the same ideas on life, the same values, and we call that lifestyles. Sounds like a pretty good life. It's actually, it's quite normal. A normal life, that, that's the it's key. It's normal, but it's very hard to be normal. Creating a sense of normalcy is the number one goal here at Hogevik. Oftentimes, that means creating a routine and sticking to it. Well, if you walk in here, um, this will look like just about any other grocery store to you, but I want to point out a few things that are different. Uh, you do see the same products, uh, juices, you can buy just about anything you want, cleaning products, but you'll notice pretty quickly there's, there's no prices on anything. And as you're about to see, there's no money that has exchanged hands either. The customers, as you might guess, uh, a very different type of clientele here. They are residents of this village. They all have severe dementia. Oftentimes, they come here with their caregivers. Ultimately, when they come up to the front desk after buying all their products, they don't exchange any money. And Trudy, who is the staff member, is trained specifically to handle people with dementia. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Some compare this manufactured reality to the movie The Truman Show. That's the whole kit and caboodle. Catch you, ladies. A man, played by Jim Carrey, discovers his entire life is actually a TV program. Everything he thinks is real is a mirage created by television producers. Do, do the people here ever feel, I mean, do you, ever, do you ever get the impression that they feel like they're being fooled or duped in any way? Um, why should they feel they are fooled? We have a society here. Our supermarket is not a show. It's a real supermarket. Right. Maybe we're fooling them when we say, it's okay what you're doing. But that's because we want to help people enjoy life and feel that they are welcome here on this earth. For the rest of their lives. Because here at Hogeve, a vacancy only becomes available when a current resident passes away. Ada Pikovet has been making music with her husband Ben for as long as they've been together. How did you meet? In a pub. In a pub? Yes. <laughs> did you? What, what, did someone introduce you, or you just you just saw each other in the pub? No, it was in a, a pub for uh, just a pub, and I went with a, a friend of me. We went there, and they were playing cards. But then after, he offered me a drink, and bit by bit we fall in love till this moment. Huh? You, do you remember that, Ben? Yeah. Do you remember the playing of the cards and the buying of the drink? you know that I in the cafe and that Yeah, 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 yeah. In comparison with Hogeve's other residents, Ben is a lucky man. These days, he can still manage to get a few words out here and there. But doctors warn his Alzheimer's disease is rapidly progressing. I hear a lot of music here. People singing, uh, piano playing. How important is music? Music is very important because people with dementia, we see that people with dementia, and I, it's scientifically shown also, that uh, music is, is part that in the brain that, is, that functions the longest. We, I've even seen people that can't talk anymore. They don't have the words to talk, but they can sing songs. I've seen people playing instruments. Um, music is wonderful. Okay. 
how how important is it for, for, for you to play piano now and have him sing with you? It's very important. Why? Yeah, so you can, it's a, a kind of, uh, you have a kind of communication where we are used to. So yeah. the, you, we can't talk no more about everything, but when singing a little bit louder or so, you can make a good contact together. Yeah. And for me, it's very important. Yeah. You come visit every day? Yes, hardly every day. Sometimes I try one day a week not to come, so I do other things, but yes, and normally six days a week and sometimes seven. What? I think that's wonderful, but, but, but is it hard for you to do? Uh, I don't think in uh, that terms hard or not hard. I, I don't feel fine when I, I, I didn't visit him because he's still waiting for me every day. Vind jij het leuk als ik kom? Ja, ja. Ja, hij lijkt het dat hij hem kan met. You guys hold hands a lot, I see, huh? Your, your, arms, are, your arms are interlinked. Yes. Do you, you spend a lot of time like that? Yes, because I think that's important. To have, uh, when you uh, don't have uh, so much possible to talk about everything, then you still have this possibility. Uh, and I think it's very important for all the people with this disease. What, what's the hardest part about all of this for you? Uh, ooh. Now, the communication. And that you can see that he's losing, losing so many things. But he is still a, a kind man. He's not aggressive, and that's wonderful. Unfortunately, aggressive behavior is not uncommon in late-stage Alzheimer's. Oftentimes triggered by confusion or frustration, it can occur suddenly. That's where resident social worker Marilene de Visser comes in. There you go, my darling. You uh, never leave your phone, do you? No, I don't. Well, what happens? I mean, how, how many calls a day are you getting? Well, it depends. Um, for now, uh, we've got um, a sir in here, and he's really nervous and um, gets agitated and aggress aggressive sometimes. So, well, then I have to pick up and go there and try to calm him down. Is, is that the most common sort of, what's the most common sort of call you get? Um, well, people are nervous and restless. Every person, we have a sort of trick book. <laughs> you have a trick book? Yeah. So for this person that you're worried about and uh, who's aggressive, I mean, yeah. what, 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 is your, what are your tricks? Well, sometimes I go there and I say, uh, I was looking for you and be really enth enthusiastic. So he thinks, oh, she knows me. So you, you, you have to sort of, be creative. Yeah, really creative, yeah. Creativity usually comes at a higher cost. But here, that's not the case. In the Netherlands, it's a state-run system. What about the cost? How is it paid for? Well, it's, it's, the, it's a Dutch system, and we have the same budget as any other nursing home in the Netherlands. We have no more, no less. You take anybody. What about mild, too mild a dementia? I mean, what's yes. the criteria? Yes, here in the Netherlands we have different indications and you need the, the, the indication for severe dementia to come here. If you have mild uh, dementia, then you don't have the indication to come here. Can you, I mean, and I'm sure there's, there's specific clinical criteria, but can you describe generally what that means? Well, generally it's that somebody needs attention and support for 24 hours a day. You have 152 people living here. Yes. As you say, um, people come here, but then they also die here. We just saw it today. Yes. How is that for you? Well, you know, with a lot of people you think, well, they've had their life and they're, they're ready to die. You see that some people are relieved that they can die. Up until that moment, they are watched over and comforted by full and part-time caregivers who outnumber the residents two to one. You see, every single worker and volunteer working in the supermarket, restaurant. Hello, dag Tante Ine. 
Even the hair salon has been specially trained to take care of people with severe dementia. So part of having a, a normal society is uh, being able to get your hair done as well. Yes. And how, how, how busy are you? I'm very busy, yeah. but I think it's also um, a very special uh, work. Ik ga je haar feunen. She telling you to hurry up? Is that what this no, is? No, no, it's not hurry up. What? She do it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> The simple act of brushing Ina's hair seems to have a calming effect. Ik doe er niks meer aan. Nee. Okay. Ina looks like Ina and hopefully still recognizes herself in the mirror. The same, sadly, cannot be said for everyone I met. Spending a few days here at Hogeve opened my eyes to a world of possibilities of what growing old could look like. But all the comforting stories couldn't soften the blow that came with meeting the toughest cases. How old are you? Uh, I have been born in... Uh, oh, God, how old are <laughs> Hard to remember. 1926, I mean. 1926? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly. You hear that a lot around here. As time goes by, the grasp on reality fades for residents like Jo Ferhoff. So you, you, you say you have a job? Yes. What do you do? Uh, okay. I keep a van. I, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Tomorrow I know it, then Tomorrow I have know. to go to it. <laughs> are, are, there, are there absolute no-nos? I mean, things that you should never do uh, when you're dealing with someone with dementia? Uh, yeah, uh, correct them. Say, no, don't do this, don't do that. They won't remember it, so why would you? They're not childs or something. Uh, are you happy here? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I am a happy people. I, I like, I have children, I have a father and a mother. When's the last time you saw your parents? My oldest, my parents? Yeah. Oh, uh, yesterday. So than yesterday? Yes. Do you try and jog people's memory, refresh their memory, or do you just let them, do you, do you redirect them? What, what is it's, your strategy? Uh, it depends on the, the face of dementia. For example, uh, very often people ask me, where are my parents? That's a daily question. And uh, in the beginning, you can ask if a person is not so far in their dimension, you can ask, um, well, how old are you? And someone says, well, I'm 84. You say, well, how old would your parents be? And then they can, they can um, think and, well, oh, that doesn't make sense. Jo's dementia has progressed too far to process that kind of logic. But if it bothers her at all, you can't tell. And with so many other residents just like her, there are special modifications here to keep everyone safe. Well, sometimes it's the small things that make a difference in a village like this. Take an elevator, for example. Maybe you don't know what this does exactly, but there's a sensor over there. It turns on that button over here, that calls the elevator. I didn't have to touch anything because perhaps I wouldn't even know what this, what this door was going to do. But now when I walk into the elevator, again, without touching anything for my weight alone, it is sense that someone is here and is not gonna take me up to the next floor. Study after study shows that stimulating the mind is the best way to slow the brain's decline. At Hogave, there are 25 clubs, including this one, for example, baking, just to help keep the residents active. When I ask someone to uh, finish the table, I won't ask them, oh, do the table, because that would be like asking you, uh, well, make me a puzzle, a thousand pieces. But I give him the last plate and I say, well, can you do that for me? And he will do it, and I say, oh, thank you, because of you we can eat. 
you, you say that there are results. Yes. Do you think people are physically healthier living in this environment? Yes, we see that people have are invited to exercise more because everybody can go outside, walk in the sun. Social contacts are very important for people with dementia. It helps different parts of the brains to connect and we see that people meet others here. This life helps people to live a healthy life. That helps people to get strong. And that, that's, and that's been shown now? I mean, in terms of eating, they eat better. Yeah. In terms of getting off of medications, living longer. Do, do yes. you actually see that? Well, we haven't had scientific research on living longer. Uh, we haven't done that yet, but by the, um, in 1992, when we started this, people came in with the same indication and they would stay in the average of two, two and a half years with us. Now it's three, three and a half years. It's not scientific, but I can count. So what? In here people can still be uh, their self, they can be human. They're not just a, a person with dementia, or they're still a person and they can and do whatever they like. Take it, go ahead. Marjolein. Hi. Okay, ik kom er zo aan. Doei doei. I have to go. Duty yeah. calls? Yeah. Bye. One of the most difficult residents has barricaded himself inside his home. It's happened before. And just like that, Marie Lane is on her way. You, you talked about the fact that um, the place that you used to work, you couldn't imagine your own parents being there. It's always difficult to think about our parents in these types of situations. But how about now, for your mom? My mother has a dementia, mild dementia. She lives in a home for the elderly, and I see that she's very happy there. Where does, it, where does this go from here for you? Because right now you have this neighborhood, again, a, a normal neighborhood, as you put it, 152 residents. What would, what would you want it to be in five or ten years? Well, what we're looking at is that we want it to be possible for people, for the partners of our residents to live here too. But that's in the system we have here in the Netherlands at the moment, that's not possible, not with the budget we have. Could this work in other countries? You, you've traveled around the world. Could this work in other cultures, other countries? The concept could work. It, this is Dutch. We have Dutch um, design, we have the Dutch cultures, Dutch groups, lifestyles. Actually, what it's, it means, this concept, is that you value the person, the individual, and that you support them to live their life as usual, and you can do that everywhere. On a physical level, people here require fewer medications. They eat better, and yes, they live longer. But on a mental level, they also seem to have more joy. It's a difficult thing to measure, but it's the most important thing according to the leadership here in Hoikovoy. Now, could this work in other parts of the world? That's the next question.